Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining the third webinar in our Automate webinar series uh, at Bernie Group. We're delighted to have you all. Um, if this is your first time joining us, thank you. I'm delighted to have you join us in you know, covering technology and automation and AI topics um, across enterprises. Um, my name is Najib Sauer, and I'm um, going to kick off this very exciting topic on everything you need to know about intelligent document processing. So before we get into the meat of the webinar and introduce the panel, I just want to cover some housekeeping items. So much like our previous webinars, this session will be recorded and sent to all participants after the webinar is completed. We will have a listen only mode, so it's not a live webinar in terms of asking questions. We do have the ability for you guys to add in comments. So if you do have questions, please submit them through our um, little chat box that you should see on your screen. And we'll be moderating them and asking, answering the questions either um, live during the call or, or the conference or, or during a Q&A Q &A session at the end. So um, without further ado, I would, um, I'm going to introduce our panel, uh, starting with our dear friend, Suman Banerjee. Thank you, uh, Najib. Pleasure to be here. Uh, hello, everybody, uh, whoever is joining uh, across different time zones. Uh, good morning, afternoon and uh, evening. Um, my name is Simone Banerjee, and I am uh, working in the capacity of Director for Process Excellence and Intelligent Automation at Terranet. Um, I'll take a quick few seconds to introduce my organization. We provide uh, statutory registration services uh, for the provinces of uh, Ontario and Manitoba in Canada, and uh, we are undoubtedly the the market leader in in providing electronic registry services. Uh, you know, across across the board, uh, we also operate uh, the collateral management solutions business out of uh, the province of Ontario. And I'm delighted to be part of this webinar and appreciate <coughs> the uh, invitation from the Bernie Group, Najib. Wonderful, thank you, Suman. Um, also, I'd like to introduce Rennie from the Bernie Group. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Renny, and uh, I'm an engagement manager with uh, the technology and automation uh, practice at Bunny Group. Uh, I'm pretty excited to have this opportunity to speak with uh, you all today. And a bit of background about myself. Uh, I've been involved in implementing uh, RPA solutions as well as its complementary technologies like uh, IDP intelligent document processing and workflow automation. Uh, across multiple enterprise organizations and um, this journey has uh, has uh, has brought me to has introduced me to unique challenges that come with such uh, transformative initiatives so so i'm excited to share my insights experiences and uh, learnings uh, from my journey and uh, look forward to delivering an engaging session Wonderful. Thanks, Rani. So as we get into some questions for our panel here, um, the capability we're talking about today is intelligent document processing. For So for those on the, on the webinar that are unaware of what this capability is, it's essentially a set of tools and supporting capabilities that are aimed at extracting data out of structured un, or unstructured forms. So we, we've all dealt with it, with it in our day to days, or we have team members that are working on emails or paper or scanned images to extract data from from this these um, these forms to basically do their day to day jobs or or kick off automation downstream. So, the the IDP market <clears throat> itself is projected to reach six point three billion by twenty twenty seven, which is growing at north of thirty five percent a year, in comparison with complementary solutions such as RPA, which is growing at around thirty percent. So. Um, Rennie, why do you think that IDP is gaining this traction and why are, what are some of the key considerations <clears throat> that organizations need to, need to keep in mind when they start their IDP journey? Yeah, great question, Najib. So, so to answer this, I have to probably go back to around 2016, 2017. Uh, that was the time RPA was the talk of the town, just like uh, Gen AI these days, right? Uh, everyone wanted to get onto the RPA bandwagon. And organizations started implementing RPA processes, but uh, what they saw during their uh, RPA journey was that they could just automate tasks and not end-to-end -end processes because uh, <clears throat> most of the processes that they had within the organization had some kind of paper or unstructured data involved. So, so, so they tried to get around this situation by uh, by by going for a push for digital transformation. Right, that was another big uh, buzzword during that time. So. Digital transformation was they were trying to uh, launch web forms, uh, launch their applications so that they could get their customers onto their digital platforms. 
uh, and this digital data would provide structured data for these organizations to then take this data and process it and push it off to their end system. So, so they went on this journey of digital transformation and uh, what they saw was there was still a subset of customers that still remained on paper. They were still sending in paper, paper forms, paper application forms, and um, you really can't force things on the customer. You need to evolve based on the customer's needs. So, so then that's when uh, there were OCR technologies at that time, but uh, that is actually when the, there was a push for introduction of these OCR or IDP technologies. <clears throat> within the organizations right so so they started up at that time to introduce ocr or idp i would say idp at that time to so that they could extract these data from their paper forms or paper applications form uh, converted into a structured data so that it could be sent into rpa or the downstream tools right so uh, according to me it was the growth of rpa the push for digital transformation that actually resulted in this growing traction for idp and 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 it's continuing to growing right continuing to grow because of uh, uh, advances in technology there's other lot of technologies that <laughs> it's improving the idp solution and and now it's not just uh, text anymore it is also extracting data from other sources of data so so that is why i think uh, it, idp is gaining this traction <clears throat> the second question najib was uh, I think it was around the considerations for organizations as they go on their IDP journey. So, so for that, if I think about it, there, there's uh, three, three critical considerations. There, there's a ton of considerations, but I want to highlight three critical considerations that organizations need to keep in mind. One is um, most critical. Number one for any organization should be data privacy and security. So, so there's these IDP tools, which is dealing with uh, paper forms that come in from the customers. So, what do these forms contain? They contain personal information of the customer. They can contain payment information of customers. So this data needs to be securely stored. And uh, these IDP tools, when they process this data, it needs to be processed in a way where their customer data is secure. If, if security is not a consideration, I would be surprised. And any organization that is starting or is on their journey of IDP has to have data privacy and security number one number two is uh, integration capability of these idp tools so so when you introduce these idp tools within your organizations your organizations already have a number of tools that they're using for their processes they could be rpa tools they could be crm systems they could be erp systems so these idp solution uh, needs to integrate with these tools because if you look at it, IDP cannot be a standalone solution. It has to integrate with these tools that's already existing in your solution. So, so no, number two on that's most important is integration capability of IDP and uh, the in document processing solutions that are out there today are pretty much capable. They have API capability, file system, cloud integration as well as coming up. <clears throat> So that should be number two consideration that uh, you keep in mind uh, when you're on your IDP journey. Take a look at what are the integration capability of your IDP solution. Third is uh, now this year, 2023 is the year for Gen AI, right? So, so Gen AI is the talk of the town everywhere. So when you're on your IDP journey, make sure it has, uh, it has AI and ML capability because that is the future now with your IDP solution. So if you go to, so IDP tools have, there are multiple forms of IDP solutions, right? There's template based IDP solutions where you need to draw out a template for your form and then make sure uh, it's, you process in your IDP tools only forms where you have the template existing. But, but now there's AI and ML capability where IDP tools can extract data from any kind of form. So make sure that the IDP tool that you're selecting has this capability because that is where the future lies. Awesome, thanks Rennie. So um, over to you, Suman, can you briefly provide an overview of how Terranet leveraged IDP and how, how did it fit in the broader automation landscape within Terranet's journey and where you guys are going in the future? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Najib, a great question. Um, our tryst uh, with the IDP 
technology began as part of our automation journey within the RPA landscape. Uh, we are a Blue Prism shop. Uh, we exclusively use Blue Prism and started back in 2019 where we were, you know, we, uh, we automated a few processes, but we were not able to completely cover the landscape from a end-to-end -end automation regarding unstructured and semi-structured data, right? So just a brief overview of unstructured data means completely handwritten. There is absolutely no digital data structure backing that um, that uh, that scribble or writing on the paper. So that's completely unstructured. Semi-structured can be an example, can be something that is electronically produced in a form, like a PDF web form or a smart form, but then it, it is scanned and it basically exists as an image. So even though the data is, uh, is is electronically uh, is electronically populated, it does not result to an underlying data structure behind the scenes, such as an XML output, where a digital output can be can be obtained. So we kind of got stuck in there back in you know the 2020s, just before COVID hit, and then recently, you know, as part of our ongoing automation in one of our lines of business, uh, we were presented with a unique challenge where uh, we had to look at a OCR slash IDP solution to enable us to go end to end on, on the automation uh, automation scape, right? So they were uh, smart forms that were coming in for verification purposes, which was automated by a traditional Blue Prism uh, RPA solution. But then there were semi and unstructured data containing signature pages, uh, which were you know signed by clients, handwritten dates, names, et cetera which did not have a digital component or an output. And so the bot could not take the automation into end. So we had to incorporate what Renny mentioned, the integration of an OCR IDP solution with the existing Blue Prism platform to enable end-to-end -end automation. That's how kind of you know, our journey begin. Uh, to answer your second part of the question as to you know, how it fits to the broader automation landscape, uh, we, as I mentioned, you know, we are in the statutory registry services, right? So there is a lot of paperwork. Uh, that comes in. Uh, you know, we are the world leader in, in in digitizing and electronically generating the document, but there is still a ton of uh, you know signed documents and different forms that come in, which does not fit a traditional RPA automation landscape. And with our uh, you know success in this automation journey through the use of integrating an RPA using an OCR IDP solution. This completely broadens the landscape for us, so it fits perfectly with the you know overall automation landscape, which we are able to now bring previously out of scope processes in scope due to a successful integration of these technologies, right? And for the next part, I would refer to what you know Renny had mentioned. You know, it is it is the era of Gen AI, and uh, it's the talk of the town. So we now need to look at not only an existing RPA OCR IDP solution, but also involve Gen AI in, in and figure out how that fits into the entire end-to-end -end automation. That's a, that I believe is the is the long-term next step. An immediate next step would be obviously for us to bring hitherto um, out of scope processes back in scope and enable an end-to-end -end automation using RPA Blue Prism RPA and um, a suitable OCR solution. Awesome, thanks for that, Sumon. And, and what strikes me a lot, particularly with Terranet's business is the amount of paper as you articulated and the way the paper comes in, you, you typically don't have a lot of control over the, the types of data that you have to try and extract um, you know, elements from. So with that in mind, what would you say the biggest challenges or roadblocks that you faced during your implementation and how did you overcome them? And were there, are there any sort of common misconceptions about IDP that maybe or as part of the sales cycle that you, you realize that, you know, are, aren't so true or require a lot more effort to, to actually operationalize? Thank you, Najib. That's a, those are two pretty big questions. I'll try to, try to take them one at a time. The first one is, you know, how, how we went about doing it and what are some of the challenges that we faced? Um, there are at least three that comes top of the mind. There were numerous, but at least three that I would like to uh, delve upon. Yeah, the first one would be uh, when we went about doing this, we did not have a blueprint in front of us. What I mean by that is there was not a precedent setting use case in front of us that we could just say that, okay, this fits this you know overall thing. So let's just do what these guys did. It did not exist. So we had to come up with our own solution on how we want to go about doing this. Failure was not an option for us because if we were not able to automate this, uh, you know, this whole 
or we were not able to crack this semi-structured slash unstructured data converting to a digital output, we would not have got an end-to-end -end automation, right? So the absence of a uh, existing use case was a preliminary challenge, which we uh, which we encountered and successfully solved. And I'm very proud of the entire Terranet team who worked on this. Um, just about how we solved it, you know, it was a lot of experimentation. We did not, you know, we did not just wake up one morning and got this brilliant idea, right? We we actually did fail. Um, so I would, you know, I would appreciate and I actually thank a lot on the company culture, the leadership culture that Terranet brings in, where, you know, failure is not frowned upon, right? It's an experimentation journey and the leadership showed tremendous patience as we worked through our journey to automate, right? So uh, there were a lot of lot of different uh, different inputs that came in, and um, if you look at a traditional OCR slash IDP solution, and I'd like to name the solution that we use. We use a tool called Parascript as part of our automation journey, and within that whole OCR tool, we have an IDP uh, module enabled, which uh, does intelligent uh, document processing. Um, so when we went about doing this, a traditional approach to OCR would be a templated approach. Think of this as the blueprint of your house, where your living room would be, where your kitchen would be, and then the builder builds on top of it, right? So that's a traditional way of looking at an OCR solution, where we're looking at a template. Um, the problem with the template is that the that's another, actually, I should have mentioned, this is another challenge on the design of the entire, uh, entire system. Um, if we went to a templated approach, we were potentially looking at a infinite number of um, number of templates that we had to build, because even though a a document looks the same to the human eye, even if one of the text fields that you are OCRing or IDPing is even moved by a slight amount of uh, you know uh, pixels, because these are scanned pages that are coming in as terms of unstructured data, it's a different template. So potentially one single form can have an infinite number of templates. So a static templating approach did not work for us. And that is where you know, we successfully leveraged the Parascript tool to go to a dynamic templating approach where the position of the OCRable extraction field did not you know, play an impactful role in our ability to accurately extract the data. So, you know, the, the absence of a existing use case that we could quickly delve upon was the first challenge. How we went about the design of the uh, of the entire uh, solution was another challenge that we had to face. Um, the third challenge that I would like to mention is I would I would not try to call it a challenge, but this is something that everybody should keep in mind. Um, OCR is a very you know all this it's a very technology heavy solution. So. You know, a lot of people who are working in it are very technology focused, um, but sometimes we like we tend to overlook the human aspect of it, especially working with RPA solutions, right? So what I'm trying to go to is the change management aspect. And uh, you know, sometimes we go so deep into the solution that we forget how do we do it through a change management approach and how this change is going to affect the parties to which this solution is going to cater. So that is another, uh, as I said, I would not call this a challenge, but this is another aspect of the whole implementation that we uh, that we tried to navigate, and I would say successfully did that. Um, I am very proud of the fact that uh, you know, as part of the Blue Prism portfolio, Blue Prism holds an award ceremony every year through their global customer base, um, and I'm proud to say that Terranet actually won the 2023 America's All America's Award for Innovation Brilliance because the way we handled the design and the solution we presented for an effective RPA OCR slash IDB solution. Um, go ahead. That, oh, sorry. No, continue, Simon. Please. I was about to come to the second aspect uh, of your question, which was, you know, what are some of the common misconceptions, right? Uh, personally, I think it's been a very learning, it's a huge learning curve for me, uh, working through this team, working with vendors such as, you know, yourself, Blue Prism, Parascript, um, and especially the fact that a, 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 a successful precedent setting use case did not exist for us. And we had to think out of the box, come up with those solutions, some other misconceptions, and we were guilty of those as well. The first one that I would like to mention is a misconception that IDP and OCR are the same thing, right? And no judgment, it is, it is something that I actually believed as well when I first went to it. Like, what is IDP? It's I'm wearing an OCR tool. 
it's it's sort of the same thing. Actually, they are not. OC, think of IDP as a more of a subset of uh, optical character recognition tool, right? Uh, um, An IDP takes an OCR tool to the next level in terms of understanding the context behind the extracted data. So it takes an unstructured, semi-structured data, converts it to a binary digital output, and feeds it to the into an RP automation, right? But understanding that context becomes important because you know through an IDP solution, the the extraction accuracy increases many times, and that is important because that is the output to the um, uh, to the bot. The second misconception that we might have is that IDP solution or OCR solution does not require any human intervention. In my experience through my uh, my time working with this, uh, it actually requires a lot of human interaction, especially obviously while designing it, building it, and moving it to steady state. Obviously, once you are in steady state, the human intervention becomes less and less, but it's still there, right? It's still monitored. Um, and uh, we need to look at it from a continuous improvement mindset that it is not a once done for all solution, right? We need to continually monitor and tweak it to be able to do it. Um, the third one that I would like to mention is that it's a one size fit all solution and IDP is going to solve all our problems. No IDP OCR solution, and I can you know go out on a limb and say this, is 100% accurate 100% of the time. So we need to have a mindset, a, you know, an, an accommodating mindset that, you know, what is the way we are looking at this uh, portfolio? In our case, we use the traditional lean concept of Pareto principle where we looked at, is this solving 80 to 85 percent of my most complex or most voluminous use case? If it is doing that, then I'm not going to build for an exception. I'm not going to build for that 10 to 20 percent. I am going to build for that 80 to 85 percent success rate. Right, and then build on top of it through you know co collaborative uh, uh, technologies such as JNAI, through improved IDP solutions and, and all of that. So I think those are you know in an interest of time, there are lots more I can talk about, but I'll I'll stick to those three as the most common misconceptions uh, through my own journey, Najib. And I just asked another question on the journey, and you mentioned this a little bit around not being a hundred percent accurate all the time. How do you go about approaching business operators and leaders on dealing with uncertainty? Because typical technology de delivery is I have a user story, I have a requirement, and it's yes. met. And I know it's met in UAT and production. How did you approach that from a leadership alignment perspective? Yeah, great question, uh, Najib. And uh, you know, I'd like to start answering that question using the big C, which is culture. Um, often, often overlooked when we are very focused in a technology delivery situation. Uh, but it plays a critical role throughout. Um, so you know, how do you define culture? It's how we operate, right? How we interact with each other. It is how we interact with the people at the ground level, the hands-on keyboard, and how we interact with the leadership, keeping all stakeholders involved. Um, I would say that, you know, from my perspective, the way we dealt uh, about and went about doing this was uh, leveraged a lot of my own personal relationship with the uh, with the leadership and all stakeholders involved. Um, and, and that takes a little bit of time to build a credence, right? That, that takes a little bit of time to build the trust. Um, so I leveraged a lot of that. Um, and I, uh, it also helped us to set clear expectation. Uh, if you recall that I said that, you know, we actually did fail. Uh, it was not a, you know, we just turned on the switch and we were super uber successful from right on, right? So setting the expectation that, you know, there is no precedent setting um, my, use case. We are trying this out. And we are going to do our best. And if this does not work, we are not going to give up and keep doing it. We were resilient. Um, that clear communication helped a lot in terms of setting expectation. And again, as I said, you know, different companies have different culture. Uh, and, uh, you know, Terrence culture speaks for itself where the leadership was patient. Uh, they did not give up on us. And, uh, you know, it took us some time, absolutely. But we were able to deliver. Right. So I think, you know, steady communication, setting expectation, leveraging personal relationship, and most importantly, building personal relationships as you move through the journey. You know, when I first started off working with this team, you know, the amount of people, number of people I knew in the business then versus the number of people I know now is vastly different. And I'm sure in the next automation journey that, you know, uh, Theranet entrusts me to lead, I am, I am going to keep leveraging those relationships to take this to the successful level. So don't be, again, you know, don't be shy to fail. 
you will fail that i can guarantee uh, but it's what you're learning from your failure and taking taking the next step is what really matters Awesome. Thanks, Suman. And you mentioned that the tool you guys selected was Periscript in, in combination to Blue Prism. How, how did you guys end up aligning on that solution in terms of upfront due diligence? Because there, there's obviously a lot more options now um, than they potentially were a few years ago when you were looking, but it'd be good to understand how, how you landed on that um, that design pattern. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there, there is a, you know, a, there is a, a established process within the organization that it's it's part of the technology stack right so ocr idp solution becomes part of an existing technology stack so whenever you are introducing a new technology within a operational environment uh, we have a set process we have a architecture something called an architecture review board where any major architectural changes need to go through an entire change management process needs to be presented in front of the board and then get approval and then go about implementation so we did follow that and follow that process Prior to that process, there was a part of a bit of a due diligence because one good thing is that we had very strong team members in terms of understanding that the, the need, the what. Before we go into solving the how, we need to understand what we are solving because if we don't have a clear picture of what you want to get out of it, uh, it's going to face some major roadblocks. So that's another actually <laughs> learning that, I, you know, that, that came up for us. Um, what we did is we did um, a, an initial shortlist uh, through the help of a cross-functional team involving architecture, involving you know IT ops, involving procurement, and I, as on behalf of my team, presented my requirements that I'm <clears throat> automating A as part of automating A. I need B to happen, so I need a solution focusing on B. So help me find out who are the major key players in this segment. So we shortlisted about three to four different technologies, competing technologies, all good. And we did a very small proof of concept on each of these. And I would like to take a moment to explain that when we are doing a proof of concept, how we sample the data is very important because you know, when we are sampling, it wants to be, you want that to be a representative sample covering a big portion of what you're trying to deliver, right? So identifying that sample was our job and I think we did it well. And uh, we ran a POC, tabulated the result, documented the results. It was all part of the process. And out of those, you know, Periscript came out, emerged as a clear winner. And it was compatible to using uh, Blue Prism as our underlying or overarching RPA solution. So that was one of the criteria that, you know, how do we communicate with Blue Prism through the OCR? Because one system needs to be communicating with the other con continuously. So we kind of went about in a very structured way. It was not ad hoc, um, had a lot of stakeholders involvement. And at the end of the day, we were successful in implementing it. Awesome. Thanks, Suman. And just while we wait for other questions to to come in, Renny, wh where do you see the future of IDP going in terms of, I know we, we've both mentioned the the sort of Gen AI being the talk of the town, and how do you envision it evolving with, within the broader automation landscape? Yeah. Now, when I think about it, the key big trends in IDP that we are seeing recently, Suman touched upon it, uh, NLP, like it understands context, IDP to understand context, NLP and self-learning systems. So, so when I talk about NLP, what I mean is uh, extracting data from completely unstructured documents. So we recently underwent a program where we implemented uh, a similar IDP solution uh, uh, at an insurance organization, and this was automating their FNO request. So, so it was able to extract data from emails, like uh, the requirement was extracting data from emails. When that was one of the requirements, I was like, oh, IDP solutions are for forms. You can extract data from forms. How are we going to extract data from emails? But there we went and did a market research and we figured out there was a solution uh, similar to Periscript Sotspoke, which could actually extract data from emails. So customers would send in uh, that an email saying that they were involved in an accident. This was the vehicle details, what happened. And I was surprised by the results. The IDP solution could actually extract, understand the context of the email understand the type of uh, loss that had occurred and extract the relevant details. So NLP integration is key, uh, key for IDP, and that is coming up as well when self-learning systems. So as Suman mentioned, right, templates are not always the same. They can always keep changing. And, and with the current generation of IDP tools that's coming up, you don't have to create a template. All you need to do is what fields to, uh, the IDP solution needs to extract 
uh, read from read uh, put in the forms and the tool can extract data from these forms right so so self learning uh, nlp integration and something that's come up now which i've learned recently is multimodal <laughs> processing uh, idp is not just now limited to extracting data from text like it can be images text but it can also understand an image and extract relevant data from that image right so let's say you had an accident and then uh, you need to take a picture of your vehicle from all four sides and then it can extract details as to what the make and model of your vehicle which part of your vehicle was injured and it's able to understand the context of the image and extract the relevant information so that's multimodal it's not no longer restricted to just text it can extract data from audio video and images at this point so so those are the key trends i see in idp and I see we are at time, but your second question, Najib, uh, where does IDP fit in your automation? Uh, IDP is never a standalone solution. So, so it has to be integrated with any other solution because the, you need to action upon the data that is being extracted. So off late, I see IDP tools being integrated with uh, BPM solutions, with RPA solutions, and sometimes I, IDP solutions with the API capability can push data directly to your end system, uh, let's say CRM or ERP, right? So it's never a standalone, but it is a key component of your hyper automation journey. Awesome, Th thanks so much guys. And I know we're at time. So for um, everyone that joined us, thank you so much. Um, and uh, we will be providing a recording of this webinar. In terms of what's coming up next week, we are uh, gonna wrap up our, our first um, instance of the Automate uh, webinar series with an exciting topic on a practical guide to unlocking the power of generative AI. So um, we have some expertise with our, our friend and colleague, Shale, um, that we're gonna be talking about governance and enablement of Gen AI and broader ML large language models in, in an enterprise context. So look forward to seeing you guys all next week. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one, guys.